Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of unusual structure looking at songs that tend to move away from the verse chorus verse chorus format and explore something wholly unique or even completely linear. Today we're going to be looking at the band Mouth of the Architect, the track Baobab off of the album 111. Let's see what Mouth of the Architect is bringing to the table today. We have an 11 beat phrase working off of a 5 and a 6 pulse. Three hits, two silence, four hits, two silence. Or two held out, I suppose, would be better. it up just in case but no the vocals are just buried well buried's not the time they're just not as loud as I would expect Writing a pedal tone. Oh, moving into that groove. heavily into a 5-4 idea, ditching that 6-4 uh, that second uh, bar we had in the beginning. Yeah, we've shifted to like a 6-8 feel. Very light compared to the uh, the weighty aggression of the past uh, two sections. More about that aggressive stomping, where this is very, very acrobatic, light on its feet. Mostly in part due to the the ride symbol accents we got going on. Interesting dyads we've got going here. There's a little bit of tension in them.
fun use of crashes against the ride. I'm really trying to get the time signature here. What is that, just straight 4-4 with interesting phrasing to it? I think that's what it was, plus our uh, guitar and drum were accenting different rhythms. So it's just a bunch of stuff pushing against that 4-4 polyrhythmically. But I think it was just 4-4, four four. That's, that's awesome. And I love how everything comes together. This is very different from the dyad-driven dual guitar lines we had two sections ago in our B section. Building towards something.
Okay. Uh, quick addendum. I mentioned that this came off of album 111. I have no idea where Apple got that. It seems it comes off of the album, The Ties That Bind. The album art is correct on Apple Music. The album is not. Yeah, I mean, the the <laughs> it's the same album. Uh, Apple Music just has it under the title 111 instead of uh, the ties that bind. Anyways, um... So this was in definitely a linear structure. We never revisited anything. Not even uh, a remotely similar concept. Every section was just completely unique moving forward. And so it... I'm hoping that by the end of this, I've come to see this song in a different light. Maybe I unlock... Uh, meanings in places that I didn't hear in my initial reaction as I begin to process what I've listened to, but everything just sort of happens. There's no connective tissue between it all. It feels like it all belongs together, sort of, but when I go to picture how any of this fits together, it's just a mishmash of sections. The first two kind of feel like they fit together, the third and fourth do, and the fifth is a combination of everything without utilizing any specific idea. I think this is definitely a song where the idea of theme or motif or uh, recontextualizing old riffs or something in the manner of bringing old ideas to the forefront, uh, to the end of the track, or having crossovers, smoother transitions, uh, foreshadowing, call back something that would tie any of this together would make it feel more cohesive than it is. That's probably my only negative I have to say about it. Uh, it is a beautiful track, especially in movements three and four. Uh, I guess we can call them the C and D section. Uh, and the ending... Well, I, I guess I do have one more complaint, and that is that our buildup at the end of the D section into our E section... Yes, the buildup was fine when we landed in our final moment. We had that big explosive section where the electric guitars come in and the growls come in. It lacked musical impact. Uh, the chord progression we had leading into it didn't land musically with power. We had width. We had volume. There was a lot of things that gave that section the explosive uh, moment that it was aiming for but musically it didn't resolve to utilize that energy to drive it it felt like a lackluster uh, opening chord with this big bombastic moment um, it almost feels like the music undercut the intention there where the uh, production did not the production told us exactly what we were supposed to be feeling uh, and the music undercut that interesting choice but yeah like i said those are my only two complaints everything ahead of this is just going to be uh positive thinking and uh, showcasing some of the things they do very well i want to start off with our a section uh interesting idea here to utilize asymmetry even in symmetrical time signatures and utilizing asymmetry in the passage as a whole to create something that is both lumbering and unwieldy. I'm not really sure what they were aiming for here, what kind of things I'm supposed to be feeling or, or exploring visually, but we start off with an 11 beat phrase that they break up into a 5 4 and a 6 4, and then we break that up even further into three hits with two held notes and four hits with two held notes. So we get bum, 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 bum. This idea, just a series of strikes and then holding out that last one across two notes before doing it again, but having an extra hit off of it. It feels disjointed. It feels unwieldy, but it also feels massive. Part of that is just due to the constant attacks 
There is no note change. It is just these big strikes. The entire band is on them, and they are on the downbeat. There's a lot of strength in that. This lasts for three, three and a half minutes. We're in this section for quite a while. The vocals come in, and they are buried a little bit. They are clear at times when we don't have the large attacks, but anytime the instruments are booming, they are covered up a bit. It's probably just the uh, the style of music they're going for. I've <laughs> I've given my piece about this before. I it just confuses me. I mean, unless you're going for something artistic, which I don't see here. Maybe there is a, a type of burying your your voice, burying your intent, burying your your conscious thought, something along those lines that could be showcased here, but. Otherwise, I mean, you took the time to record it, you took the time to write the lyrics, and then you made it difficult to hear. <laughs> uh, whatever. It's it's artistic choice, right? There's no right or wrong way to do it. It just always, it always seems at odds to me. But I'm also someone who really loves clear uh, production as well. So we'll get into that at the end, though. There is not clear production in our E section, and I thought it was phenomenal. So stay tuned for that. That was pretty much our A section, though. Our B section takes this idea, strips off that that extra six, goes with a consistent five four, and retains this heavy-handed uh, attack. We don't really transition into anything flowery or m melodic yet. Uh, it, we do introduce dyads here. Uh, both guitars end up playing different things, and they introduce. A lot of tension in these dyads, actually. There is not uh, a strong sense of harmony here. There's a lot of consonants, which is an interesting decision to go for, and it's not consistent either. Some dyads feel a bit more stable than others. So there is this battle between stability and, uh, and consonants that's going on in our dyads. Um, interestingly, a lot of the consonants comes from the root note whenever we get chordal shifts each idea starts with one or two strikes on the root note of the chord and then we get our moving idea above that and the next bar starts and we get root notes again on the next chord sometimes this chord doesn't change there was at least one four bar phrase where we were staying in the same key but our melody was rising in pitch our root note never shifted though there were others where our root note continued to shift up uh, it felt lacking a pattern at least one that I could discern it might just be a larger idea but uh you know it could be you know a 16 in bar phrase for all I know and you know I was looking at it in pockets of four so I was just missing the bigger picture but it seemed to lack pattern to me I couldn't find one but the core idea here that I could find at least is this battle between uh harmony and consonants and uh, the continuing on with this very heavy-handed, weighty uh, direction that the track is going. And the vocals are also very aggressive. The drums are very aggressive um, and, and rigid as well. Again, sticking to downbeats for both our A and B section. There's a lot of similarities between these two. The similarities in sections dies here, though. When we move to the C section, we literally have a fade out on the last beat from our section B. Section C begins. We have clean guitar, maybe acoustic, can't remember. And it comes in with this beautiful melody. And then eventually we get another guitar melody in here. And then we get the drums coming in. Uh, maybe the drums were the D section. I can't remember. There, Like I said, a lot of similarities between A and B and C and D. But overall... I'm just going to combine C and D into one little topic here. The idea is to push heavy against what we just heard. We've gotten rid of the distortion, the compression, the aggression, the angst, uh, just sonically, our, our instruments and their timbres. We've also gotten rid of the heavy-handed um, uh, only hitting on downbeats. We've gotten away from... Uh, both instruments, both guitars, both lead instruments doing the same thing. We get away from the aggressive tone in the vocals. Not that we introduce cleans, we just don't have vocals. Um, and we get away from the consonants that we have in our two instruments tonality. 
and the dyads they're bringing to the table. In place of all of those things, like I said, we get the opposite. We have two guitars that are playing beautiful counterpoint. We have a bass that uh, provides a nice counter to what they're doing, not necessarily a counter melody, but uh, a counter idea. The drums are very gorgeously played. Uh, nice melodic playing on the drums with an emphasis on lightness. Whereas before they were very heavy handed, just always coming down on the downbeat. Now we're playing around with the beats between the hits between beats. Uh, we have these very nice eighth note ideas, syncopated concepts on our ride cymbal. It's just very light and airy, very acrobatic compared to the lumbering weight we had in our previous two sections. Um, it is just overall a gorgeous moment that stands in direct opposition to what we just explored what does it mean how did we get here we literally just faded one section out we did a crossfade one section faded out the other one came in uh the connection between them is zero maybe there's chordal structures that are similar between them i didn't hear any uh we also shifted to a four four here Oh, that's what happened. Our C section had drum and guitar at the beginning, and they were doing some weird. So there was a bit of dissonance, not uh, tonal dissonance, but rhythmic dissonance. I uh, had a difficult time finding the uh, time signature here. But like I said, in the moment, uh, I think we are in 4 4. Just odd phrasing and odd syncopation between both of our instruments, each of them having their unique phrases to them that uh, made it difficult to find where one was often. But I do think we were in 4-4, and eventually they come together, we introduce the second guitar, and we do find something completely harmonious. Um, but yeah, there's there's just no connective ideas back to A and B. Maybe that's purposeful. Maybe this is supposed to be the exact opposite. Maybe this is supposed to be finding tranquility amongst something uh, chaotic or uh, a sort of single-minded aggression. And through that, we're supposed to be finding complete opposite. This is a very different state of mind. Maybe, uh, you know, just looking at emotions, looking at very simple emotions, uh, something, make, something makes you angry and you punch your wall or something. <laughs> and so you start meditating to find some tranquility. And that's the transition there. Uh, the rough transition is finding the tranquility and then we getting into our proper calm section would be finding that peace, which is such the opposite of the anger you were feeling prior. It kind of works in that manner. But uh, like I said, I think the lyrics would have to support this too in order for me to say that this is, at least for my first listen, uh, I that I could accept that this was intentional in that way that it's uh, an artistic representation of moving from one emotion into an opposite. Otherwise, it's just two sets of, of ideas smashed up against each other with nothing between them to pull them together into a whole song. But I absolutely adored this. This was probably the best, I don't know, five minutes of the track. But, I mean, that makes sense for me. I'm a, I'm a sucker for melody and layering. And I'm not too big on just constantly driving forward on, on one note or one chord. To that raw aggression. It has its place in here. If it works, you know, I can appreciate it artistically. But yeah, that flowery, beautiful, melodic writing is going to steal my heart every time. So, yeah, I mean, this whole section was just gorgeous. And it's great to see both sides of the band. They can really dig into that sort of rhythmic textural kind of playing just getting into that heavy metal feel but they also have a very melodic uh more traditional style of writing music uh where every instrument can kind of be its own idea and they work better uh you know uh greater than the sum of its parts kind of idea um and everything just comes together into something that is gorgeous and beautiful and layered and uh yeah, so just a, a great track to hear uh, a band's diversity, which I think Mouth of the Art, the name is familiar. It's possible. We've checked them out before. I'm not going to be able to find out right now. Good job, computer, on being dumb. So, uh, maybe I'm just thinking of Architects, though. I don't know. Maybe we had them on a live stream. Anyways, the name isn't ringing a bell, so this might be the first time I've heard them, and I'm impressed at their range. 
And of course, we have the buildup at the end of our D section into our final E section, which is a huge moment. We bring everything together. We have the electric guitars from our first two sections. Uh, we have some heavier drumming that's kind of mixed with some more ornamental stuff. I'm kind of finding a midpoint between them. We have multiple guitars. I don't know how many guitarists are in the band. In some of these sections, I would count two, probably, uh, and a bass. But in this final section, there's definitely three or four guitars going on. Uh, we have some heavy uh, electric guitars. We have clean guitars as well. And they're all just kind of doing their own thing. This is a very heavy, elegant, dark, beautiful section. It pulls together the vibes of both of our two sections without pulling in any of the specific riffage from them. It's interesting in that it works, but I think even more interesting is how it feels. You see, the production here is not exceptionally clean. It hasn't really been a problem yet because it's been rather simple as far as layers go. But here we're finally seeing the production pushed to its limits. There's too many voices to ensure that sort of clarity that we've had up to this point. I should say that. It hasn't been a clean production. It's been a clear production. Here, with all of the guitars and the bass and the vocals and the drums all coming together, there's so much fighting for this really constrained sound sphere. There's just not a lot of space here for the music to exist within. And so a lot of the time it just kind of feels like this wall of sound. But what's really cool is that these random licks poke through. It'll just be this wall of sound and then I'll hear like this five note beautiful little lick on a clean guitar and it'll get sucked right back into the wall of sound. I can't pick it out anymore, but as soon as that happens, uh, you know, an electric guitar will play this neat little, you know, rough, uh, aggressive kind of lick. I'm like, oh, that was neat. And as soon as I keyed over into it, it got sucked back into the, <laughs> the blob as well. And it's kind of like, uh, you guys remember, like, I don't know if modern cartoons still do it, but like back in the day, Looney Tunes and stuff, and they would get into a, like a fight or whatever, like five or six uh, characters, and you get like the dust ball, and you see like a random arm come out with a club, and then it'll get sucked back into the dust ball, and you know, that's how they kind of animated that sort of co that fighting combat, whatever you want to call it. That's what this feels like. Like, I can see this just thing of sound and every once in a while I'll see a detail that illustrates what's going on inside this this bubble of music um, but it eventually gets pulled back in quickly and something else pops out and it's um it's very cool the wall of sound lack of clarity adds to this it feels not like a series of instruments but more like a, a somebody's core self in flux trying to figure out how they should feel or who they should be in this situation uh, with different aspects taking over or I should say becoming momentarily dominant it uh it's very cool and it comes together that way because of what comes before it because we have these opposites I'm still not too sold on the idea We'll hit the lyrics. Maybe there is a bit of duality in here that really ties everything together. Musically, it does feel like, hey, we wrote something heavy. We wrote something soft. We wrote something that achieved both of these sounds without utilizing. I really think they should have just used raw riffs that they had already written and combined them. Although I understand that takes a bit of forethought, right? You got to make two separate parts of a song that sound great on their own, lacking the other half, but also work together with all those layers. It is a lot easier than it sounds. No, it's a lot harder than it sounds. And it's much easier just to write a brand new section that retains the spirit of what they were attempting or what they did in the other two styles. But I think it would have connected everything just a hair bit more and maybe even just some transitional ideas or callbacks. Like, I'm still just a little, 
a little upset about that. I, I feel like this is a great song that could have been amazing with just a little bit of uh, a little bit of extra work put into tying things together instead of it feeling like a series of isolated concepts. Uh, all right, let's hit the lyrics real quick. We'll see what's going on. It swelled to the surface and broke the skin. A growing storm, uncontrollable. You let it die in your arms. Our tears couldn't carry you. Okay, okay. That's see, we're getting somewhere here. This is this is this is leaning into stuff that I talked about. Swelled to the surface and broke the skin. It's something very powerful that comes from within. It's a growing storm that's un uncontrollable. That could be a lot of things, and we could be leaning into something supernatural, but I'm going to stick to an emotional metaphor here. Uh, anger, rage, and that ties into sort of the beginning as well, but also um, it says that it's uncontrollable and growing, and I think it's interesting that the opening idea of this track, when this stuff would have been said, give or take, was also an uncontrollable time signature. We had that five and six alternating idea that gave us our 11 beat phrase. It transitions into a, an understanding of what possibly caused this to happen. It says, you let it die in your arms, our tears couldn't carry you. Don't know what we're referring to, but obviously something uh, was something died that was close to them. Interestingly, it says you let it die. Um, Got to figure out what that means. Possibly, we watched you fall into the fire alone. We watched you fall into the fire alone, alone. Okay, so I'm thinking this it is a person. And this might be a metaphorical view of watching them descend into the afterlife. We watched you fall into the fire alone. Possibly. Still kind of lining up with the anger. I think at this point, if I remember correctly, this is our C and D section. Our, uh, our beautiful melody, a bit haunting and melancholic. Uh, this could be the sorrow that kicks in. We move from the anger at at oneself for not for allowing the situation to happen and then expressing the grief and sorrow uh, that comes from it and then when they combine it says our hearts broke without you our hearts would have followed you and just repeats it over and over and over so yeah we have somebody who is overcome with grief at the loss of a loved one and we experience uh, at least two of the stages of grief here uh, loss and sorrow, or <laughs> anger and sorrow. Uh, it's interesting that they tie them together at the end and bring out a very powerful moment. So yeah, I mean, I can see how this lines up. I still think a little more connective tissue in the music would have elevated this from great to amazing, but it's still, I mean, it's still a pretty good track on its own. I still think that high point at the beginning of our E section could have been better with some musical oomph behind it. I have no idea what went on there. I would love to get into the chord progression there and figure out what happened that had the music undercut the feeling the way it did. But yeah, musically, it just, it lacked that impact. It had the production behind it, not the music. Those are my thoughts on Mouth of the Architect's Baobab. What does that mean? And this is also the opening track. So this sets up the rest of the album. A baobab is a genus of nine species of deciduous trees of the hibiscus. It's also a fruit that I'm going to assume comes from this said tree. It's known as the tree of life has been a food and medicine for centuries. Every part of the key, every part of the tree can be used it is an excellent source of nutrients such as vitamin C, potassium, and iron. That, I think, is the key I needed. The tree of life. The, the, song, the, the song is titled after 
a, a tree of life that has a bunch of positive ingredients for living, uh, positive components for living, uh, that is about losing somebody and wishing you could go with them to the afterlife. Okay. Uh, anyways, those are my thoughts as I started on this already. This is where you guys come in. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know if you enjoyed this or not. Anything that stood out to you. Anything you'd like to add on to what I said. Correct me on. Etc. Etc. Above that, the description box has a link for Linktree in it. It'll take you to this menu right here, which has links for everything uh, for the channel, including ways to support the channel and a link to the Discord if you're interested in joining that community. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. We also have a special selection coming out today. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Central, 5 p.m. EST, 9 p.m. UTC. We're going to check out our penultimate themed track and our final special selection for the week. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.